when the mainstream press and the government says nobody could have predicted this. Some of the, the experts have said, or people who are interviewed by the, the news, that, well, the Pacific is a big place, and it dilutes, and, you know, there's, there's all kinds of reasons not to worry about it, when the fact is, you know, we have three uncontained meltdowns going on over there, and it, this has been going on 24 hours a day. And uh, we're starting to see some of the effects of that, and even people who understood a lot about nuclear energy who have studied nuclear accidents in the past, who know a lot about how radiation affects health from not only the previous accidents, but things that we've done on purpose, like atmospheric testing during the 50s and 60s and 70s, all the way up to, I think it was 93 was when they did the last one. You know, we, we know what this does to plankton, to pretty much every stage of the food chain, but we've never had an accident like this one. And now there's some, you know, real indications that this has already reached the West Coast in a big way. And what I mean by that is the, um, the California sea lion situation that's going on right now. And this is big news, which I've seen attributed to everything from, you know, El Nino got here early, and the ocean's too cold, and no, it's actually too warm, and that's what's killing all these seals. The rescues in California are expecting 35,000 baby seals to be affected by whatever's happening in the seal world just in, in over the next few months. And it, it's worse than it was last year. Last year was worse than the year before, and this first started happening in 2011 with the Alaskan seals, and then it happened in polar bears, and then it happened in walruses, and that was all just the first summer. And, you know, he had seals washing up with, you know, red puffy eyes, and they're bleeding out of, you know, their ears, and um, their fins are burned, and they're losing hair and lesions, and then, you know, when they, when they analyzed these seals, they found, found out they were full of tumors. And, you know, the reason that we know about that, a lot of it is from the indigenous people that live in that area and actually hunt the seals, you know, and, and had made these observations. And now it's moved down the coast kind of the way the currents do. And we're seeing it as far south as San Diego this year. And it's really, really bad. And it has a lot of people very, very upset, which they should have been really a long time ago when this first started happening. And there was, um, there's been a, a gentleman on YouTube who has been saying from the beginning of this, name, he goes by the name Nibiru Magic, you can't stop the truth from leaking out of Fukushima. And unfortunately, it takes, you know, these, these giant mortality events for people to get a clue. Maybe there is something going on. You know, we've seen the starfish melting and the sardines have disappeared. And they've, you know, this, this week, I think it was... Um, I, they called it bazillions of crab-like things that had washed ashore that had never been seen before, uh, dead creatures covering the sand with a sea of red on California beaches, the orcas, their babies aren't surviving. I don't think there was even a, a single calf that survived this year, and they pay very close attention to the orcas. So, you know, the, the government and their, their various, um, you know, NOAA has been following this, and they've released some information on it. They said they did find radiation in the seals in 2011, but they didn't think it was enough that it would cause these kind of changes. That was what they were, the line that they were adhering to. And you go back and you just look at this cover-up that's going on, and it's going up kind of in every aspect of, you know, the fishing industry, they're trying to protect the tourism industry, the seafood industry. There's a lot of money to be lost by news of this nature. So there's a, a very concerted um, effort to hide what's really happening. And uh, Woods Hole, which is an oceanographic institute that has done plenty of studies and they receive all kinds of funding from the Department of Defense and a bunch of other, like 10 different government agencies, they have taken over, and they said they've taken it upon themselves to do seawater testing, and they enlist people who live along the West Coast to send them uh, samples of seawater and $500 for them to test the seawater. 
And it's actually the plankton that we need to be testing because the buildup of radiation occurs thousands of times higher in plankton than it does in surrounding seawater. So if you want to get, you know, the absolute lowest contamination level possible, you test the seawater, which is what they're doing when what they actually need to be doing is testing the plankton. And preparing to talk to you today, I went and started checking out just the latest Fukushima news, not stuff from you know, months ago. I mean, I, 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 I was looking at the articles and stuff that you sent, but I was, I just decided to go look today from the past few days just to see what was out there because you don't, it's amazing that you, even though there is stuff being put out about Fukushima, you just don't hear about it. Not even in the alternative media. It's like become taboo to talk about. It's almost like I think people are afraid to talk about it because Nobody's grown a third arm out of the middle of their forehead yet or a horn. So because there isn't some quick, oh, my God, reaction to the radiation, like physically, physio physiologically with the people there, besides all the cancers and stuff, they are, <clears throat> a lot of that's being suppressed. So people are afraid of being called fear mongers now about Fukushima, I think. So they just don't talk about it. I think they don't understand. It's one of these slow creeping things. And as each year passes, you're going to see slowly mutations take a place and more and more things. Like you said, all the sea lions, that's one of the things I wanted to bring up. How about the starfish? They're melting. And they're like, oh, it's right. bacteria. R really? I've n I'm 38. I've never seen starfish melt. Now, I know I've only been around 38 years, but I ain't never seen starfish melt into goo. Okay, you can't tell me that's some parasitic bacteria that just happened to come out of nowhere. And maybe, okay, maybe it is. Maybe it is some weird parasite. What made it start to ter liquefy the starfish if it's never done that before? So there's a mutation of some sort. So either the starfish are mutating and melting and reacting to the radiation in the seawater, or the bacteria, quote unquote, that's eating them is reacting to the re radiation and mutating and becoming like some sort of monster bacteria, which actually is even more frightening than the radiation melting the starfish. I would kind of expect the radiation to break down the body of the starfish, right? I've seen what – my mother died of cancer. Actually, she died more so of the chemo that they gave her. But I've seen what radiation does to the human body. I've seen it – saw it break her down. So I would almost expect, Christina, for the starfish to melt. But the thought that – the bacteria or whatever it is, fungus or whatever it is they say that they got, the thought that that could have been something that was completely normal that the starfish deal with, and usually their bodies could fight it off. But if this stuff was mutated by radiation, what if they created? It could be like the Godzilla of bacteria in the sea. That's, that's kind of frightening. Yeah, and we know that radiation already does this to bacteria and viruses and, you know, that, that's been known like for a long time. And you say, wow, I've, you know, I've never heard of starfish melting before. The people who study starfish and have studied starfish their whole lives had never heard of it happening before either. And there's a couple of things that make the starfish situation unique. One is that starfish actually take in seawater and use it kind of like blood. Seawater is like circulating through their body. And the second thing is that they feed on um, like oysters and clams and things like that that are filter feeders, things that don't move. They stay there. They filter the water, and, and they're very close to clay bottoms. And because of the electrical charge that's in radiation, it's attracted to clay. And also um, it is found in much higher levels in things like oysters, in things like clams. Um, because of this filtering process. And in fact, there was a document, a PDF that was released in 2011 where they had tested the Alaskan seashore and they tested rockfish and they tested all these different kinds of mussels um, and things like that. And they found contamination in all of those things, but it was much, much higher in things that were filter feeders. So this is directly what the starfish are feeding on. So you have this like dynamic going on in the food chain that would make them more susceptible I, I to didn't, it. I didn't know that they actually used the, the seawater like blood, but I mean that would that yeah. would make I mean that that they're just it's like they're being it's like they're getting chemo. <laughs>
the starfish are getting sea, you know, seawater chemo. That's right. It's it's ridiculous. I never thought about it that way, but yeah, that's kind of what it's like. 